What's the lamest way that you injured yourself badly? I thought the glowing sand under the disposable barbecue would be cool to touch, it was not cool in the slightest. My stepfather dumped the ash from the grill in the trash. Ended up setting the plastic garbage can on fire. I broke my nose while opening the fridge. I was sleepy and stood too close. That's when I stopped the habit of night snacking. I broke my arm just riding my bike on flat ground. I saw a shiny rock and turned my head to look at it and fell over. I was riding full speed down a hill once and a bee hit my forehead, knocked me ass over teacups, wrecked the bike. Link Linerson, I'm am upvoting you just because you used the phrase ass over teacups. I don't think I've ever heard anyone but my husband use that phrase until now. Plot twist, it's your husband's secret reddit. While they're on their own secret reddit account. Threw my back out taking a shit. Might be time to consider adding a little fiber to the diet. I should have stated it was more from moving slash tweaking a certain when I reached for the toilet paper, but boy did it hurt lol. I read this hilarious story about a guy who was pushing out a shit during a thunderstorm and then right when it came out everything went black. He thought he shit himself blind and his mind was racing on how to explain to his family, until he saw a flash of lightning through a window. Shit himself blind is the funniest thing I've heard in a good while. Dropped a chair on my face. Still got the scar 20 years later. Why were you carrying a chair? I was laying on the floor holding a fold up chair over me. It slipped and landed on my face, just above my eye. I should add, I was about 9 or 10 at the time. Probably old enough to know better though. This sounds exactly like something a 9 year old would do, and exactly like the result I would expect. It broke its leg. Was trying to drive a nail vertically into a pencil, ended up driving it into my hand instead. That exact thing happened to me but with a blow dart. Edit here is the... Thanks for sharing your film. I'm in school for x-ray tech, and exams like yours are my favorite to work on. I feel for my patients, but these injuries are just fascinating. I fainted and shattered my foot. By just getting out of bed. Seriously, got up and went to the bathroom, felt that wah 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 feeling, grabbed a bottle of water then crumpled, unconscious, in front of my fridge in my own apartment. I'd just moved in, didn't even have furniture and had been sleeping on a bedroll till I could pick up my stuff. I broke three metatarsals clean through, two chip fractures. Resulted in two plates and twelve screws. Didn't walk for almost six months. I stepped off a curb coming out of a movie theater and rolled my ankle. I ended up fracturing a bone in my foot that required surgery. I was on crutches for about six months. I was walking down a set of stairs at the airport and missed the bottom step. Hurt like f$ dollar percent and but I was on my way to Italy for two weeks so bought a pair of compression stockings and squeezed my very swollen foot into both of them for the flight. Walk slash hobbled stubbornly around in the beautiful cities of Italy, Florence, Venice, Verona, Pisa, for two weeks, no crutches, just a support bandage in my sandals, on what turned out was a fractured heel bone. Missed a curb and stepped funny and I ignored the pain thinking I just like pulled a muscle. Finally went to the doctor two months later and apparently I fractured my spine and tore my hip labrum. This happened to a teacher at my high school and she got a blood clot from the surgery and died. Remind me to never walk again. Never walking is another good way to get a blood clot. Remind me never to get a blood clot. I stepped in a hole in the ground and rolled my ankle. I partially tore my Achilles and needed a boot for a month or two. It's bullshit, I have weak ankles and sometimes I'll step down somewhere and randomly roll my ankle. I'm waiting for the day I get an ankle injury. Sometimes my ankles just spasm when I walk and I land on them. Even on flat surfaces. Wore two in heels to a wedding, practiced walking in them for weeks, almost ate shit walking down the aisle as the maid of honor. Had a death grip on the best man's arm. 
not me but one of my teachers in high school tripped on his sword and stabbed his leg. Had to go to the ER. Why did he have a sword? We did a civil war reenactment every year where the school would be divided between north and south and battle each other. How many casualties were allowed per year? Enough to see who wins the battle. Such a good school. Some of you may die, but that's a sacrifice I'm willing to make. I bet some students got injured. I have questions. I should clarify. Kids pelted tennis balls at each, which still hurt like hell, and the teacher had a sword. I have a few more questions. That doesn't seem like a fair fight, somehow. His stabbed leg leveled the playing field. A teacher was allowed to carry a sword? It was a small private Christian school. Weapons in school were pretty normal since a lot of the kids were into hunting. Revealing clothes though. Hell no. Grew up in small town in Co. Hunting rifles in trucks were normal. We would get out of class to go see animals people bagged that day. One semi-loud sneeze. Popped a vessel in my nose. Had to go to the hospital because it bled like a faucet. This is why it's so important to always sneeze full volume. Try and bottle any of it up, and it'll find another way out. True. Now I'm all in on dad sneezes. WWWAACHOOGGHH excuse me, the dust and pollen AHH. Unfortunately I sneeze really quietly and it makes everyone think I'm holding it in. My cousin once said I sound like a pistol with a silencer whilst he sounded like a shotgun. Stepping from one level surface to another while gardening. Rolled my ankle so hard that that horrible sensation of wrongness alone almost made me throw up. Had to crawl into the house, whole foot and calf turned purple and I was on crutches slash no driving for months. EDA, I have so many limping brethren who share my deep disappointment in the fundamental design flaws of ankles. Love to you all, big feels to everyone who has, unhappily, joined this club. I refused to take off a band-aid when I was around 6 years old. It got infected and they almost had to amputate my leg. Legs don't grow on trees. A vast, matey. If ye be a sailin' o' oh, the seven seas upon a peg leg, happen they do. A lot of things don't grow on trees. Legs, for example. Many limbs grow on trees, just not the ones we may need. Arms do. Ah, yes, the Tibetan arm tree. The 81-2th wonder of the world. But they do grow from your trunk. I did the same thing but they didn't nearly amputate it, just a small scar on my left hand for a long time that I still have. The thing was that I wasn't supposed to hear about it. I woke up just as the doctor and my mom were talking in the other room. The doctor said that there was a high chance that they would need to amputate. Imagine hearing that as a six-year-old. As a six-year-old I wouldn't even know the definition of amputate but that was just me. Your parents allowed you to refuse. I mean, as a parent if I saw something like swollen pussy leg around a band-aid, my kid can refuse all she slash he wanted, but that things is being taken off. I don't let six-year-olds make decisions like that, for exactly this reason. Though in fairness, it was just a band-aid, what harm could it do? My mom wanted me to rip it off, or my dad, but I would just lock myself in somewhere so they couldn't do anything. And the band-aid covered the scrape enough so that we couldn't see it. My dad basically just said that I would take it off in time. It did fall off, about two months after I had it on. Then we saw how screwed up it was. The scrape was on the entirety of my knee, so we couldn't see it at all. My entire knee was purple and it hurt to put pressure on it. So I got to spend about a week in the hospital. The lesson here is, don't be a whiny bitch. I'm amazed it didn't fall off after getting wet when I'm assuming you showered or whatever. I sliced my finger open the other night and put a band-aid on it before bed. By morning it had fallen off. What kind of band-aids did these people have? I'm sorry, 
but band-aids aren't strong enough to keep your fingers attached. The lesson here is, don't be a whiny bitch. Lesson to parents, sometimes being a parent means not doing what your child wants. My sister just had a newborn baby and it's debating on what name to choose from because my niece which is 4 year old wants certain name. And my sister is like oh I don't know what to do if I choose another name little Alice, my niece, will get mad. You can imagine how she is growing up. I refused to take off a band-aid when I was around 6 years old. It got infected and they almost had to amputate my leg. When little Timmy got a cut. A scratch, to be precise. He said, I think it's better, but. I think the band-aid's nice. I like my tiny band-aid friend. My budding bro, he said. The pal on which I might depend. For all the years ahead. I like my fabric friend a lot. He spoke with hope and pride. Alas, his friend was hiding rot. And Timmy fucking died. OMG the end got me. Rip 6 years old was stubborn when I was 6 years old I took the band-aid of just to pick the scab. Picking the scab feels satisfying unless it hasn't healed fully and pains and bleeds again and there's still a part of the scab hanging that bugs you to rip it off. One time I got a large cut on my arm because of this like 80 degree slide I went on when I was 8 and I picked the scab so much even in class I see the scar still on my right arm. That used to be my favorite part of scab picking. But then it's going to scab again and you'll have another one to pick. Win win in my eyes. Six year old me kept the used band-aids in my jewelry box BC I thought they were pretty. I'm literally making a post on r slash depression for my depressed arse and I see this THXMA. I tried to pee off the side of a hot tub because I was jealous that my brother and his friends could do it, I'm female. I slipped and cracked open my chin on concrete. Were you 5 or 25 when this happened? Because one is funnier than the other. I'd be 25. Craziest 40th birthday party ever. I've dislocated my shoulder multiple times high-fiving. And twice getting out of bed. Is it true that once you dislocate it it's easier to dislocate again? Seems like everybody dislocated it more than once. Very much so. Everything keeps getting stretched out each time, and there can even be bone loss slash damage from friction slash grinding, like in my case. I've thrown it out 15 times and had 3 surgeries. By climbing a tree and just standing there and somehow slip and break my legs. Edit it had been raining and I was 7. I'm sorry but the mental image of some guy standing in a tree, completely still, suddenly slipping on nothing and breaking his legs is just hilarious to me. Well, you're right. I have a giant scar on my ankle from shaving my legs drunk. I may or may not have tried to shave my pubes drunk and may or may not have injured my crotch. I can neither confirm or deny I wasn't drunk. I can neither confirm or deny I wasn't drunk, nor shaving my pubes. Female. I cut my lip shaving while I was shaving my legs. On an upward pass on my leg, the soapy razor slipped from my hand and up toward my face. Slice. I cut my cheek shaving my legs. Went to push hair out of my face with the hand holding the razor. Got teased mercilessly about how I must have been shaving my face. I was horrified until you specified face. Still not fun, but better than other lips. Coming from a lactose intolerant person, eating copious amounts of dairy to the point where I shit my organs out then pass out on the bathroom floor, then subsequently wake up with a small piece of my forehead missing. Cheese is really good though. MMM 64 slices of American cheese. I think I'm blind. Have you been up all night eating cheese? I got really high about two months ago and binge ate some peanut butter ice cream. Blue Bunny, in case you want the best ice cream ever. I ended up waking up at 3 a.m., running to the toilet, shitting my brains out, and thankfully the tub was right in front of me so I threw up too. Never again. All I know is thank god I'm not lactose intolerant. 
I don't think I am either but I just ate too much in general. When I was little I lived with my mom in a ranch house, and the whole house had this long and narrow hallway that ran through it. I thought it would be funny to run straight at my mom and parkour off the wall to pass her in the hallway at a high speed. In reality my foot slipped off the wall, I tripped over her foot and went straight down into my left hand as I caught my fall awkwardly. Broke my wrist in two places and broke three fingers lol. Parkour is where you go from point A to point B as creative as possible while point A is delusion and point B is the hospital. Edit, thanks for the award kind stranger. Parkour. In the dark I ran into a clothesline, fell backwards onto the ground, and had a concussion. Got knocked over by a five year old, hitting my head on a table and breaking my wrist in the process. I wish I was joking. Edit, wow, I'm reading some of your stories and feeling less alone. Thanks for sharing. Not me but a friend got drunk and punched a brick wall full force to prove how tough he was. The resulting damage to his hand left him permanently unable to fully close it. At the time he was very drunk and preaching about how harmful weed is because it destroys your body. My dad told me a similar story. They'd been drinking, their sober ride is trying to drive them home, he sticks his hand out the window to punch a mailbox. Couldn't do sports anymore after all the extensive surgeries they had to do on his hand. It's wild how quickly your life can change. I know, right? You never expect it coming from the mundane things you do every day, like punching mailboxes barehanded from a moving vehicle. Even USPS California stops most of the time, and they're professionals. I've shared this before, but you reminder me of when I was in college and I punched a pint glass one night when I was drunk. It ended up slicing my finger really badly, like there was a flap of skin that came up. Went to the bathroom and ran it underwater, but it just kept bleeding. I didn't know what to do and was too drunk to try to deal with it, so I just wrapped my hand in a towel and tried to go to sleep. Woke up to knocking at my door and it ended up being security. He followed a trail of blood from the bathroom to my room and wanted to make sure I was alright. I showed him my finger and he was like, come on, you gotta go to the hospital. Dude was a bro and drove me there even though it was like 3 am. Saw a doctor and he had to give me a bunch of stitches. He said I was very lucky because if it was just a tiny bit deeper I would have probably had done perm ununk damage and lost mobility of the finger. Just do it. Oh. I have to. I broke my hand attempting to punch my brother. Threw a weak fist, he blocked with his arm, and I broke the bone on the side of my right hand. I broke my clavicle after riding my bike into my dog in our driveway and flipping over the handlebars. Oh no that's terrible. Is the dog okay? No, he's dead. But he was fine after the bike crash. This was like 20 plus years ago lol. He bounced right off and came to me to lick my face because he could tell I was hurt. He was a good boy. Oh. No, he's dead. But he was fine after the bike crash. Masterfully done. LOL. I broke a toe by kicking my brother. He blocked the kick with the heel of his hand. I got a paper cut on my foot by walking past an open book. Fell on a plastic bucket. It shattered and went through my cheek. On the bright side I got a cool joker scar from it. The amount of times I kicked myself in the balls while trying to remove my socks is way too high. That's happened to me never many times. You're doing it wrong. More than once, brother. There's a lesson here somewhere. The lesson is to stop wearing socks. How do you? You might be doing it wrong, dude. Waha. How? One time I had a thought process that didn't end logically. I was horny, and I thought, vaginas are good because they are warm. Fire is warm. A big fire is too warm. A little fire is little warm. I have a small lighter, I will put that to my penis. I burned my penis. Guys, 
we need to save this comment for the next time we are trying to explain to someone how we got from point A to point catastrophe. It's just how it works sometimes. Instructions unclear dick caught in ceiling fan burned by cigarette lighter. This is how the human torch was created. Holy shit. This one wins. I don't even need to read the rest. Buster, that didn't even start logically. Was dropping a ceiling in an apartment complex for HVAC duct work. I had safety glasses on that had a mild tint. I couldn't see well with them on for one nail I had to drive. It was new construction so there was no lights in the building. Took the glasses off and the second swing of the hammer sent the nail straight into my right eye. What a stupid way to lose an eye. Thanks for watching if you could like subscribe and comment best reddit stories for more reddit videos.